Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Big Brother 23 Roundtable Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and I am here today with Asia. How are you doing, Asia? I'm doing well. I um, Some people may have seen on Twitter and Instagram, but this past weekend I hung out with Chappelle and Jacob Jones, so I'm still riding on that high of meeting them in person. They are just as great as they are on the podcast, so we had a really good time, so I'm still trying to like get back to normal life, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it takes a while. It takes, once you've been Jacob Jones and uh, chappelle Okay. Um, you, uh, you need you need some time to recuperate. Um, yes. Also here with us is Melissa, who just got a dog delivery. How you doing, Melissa? Dog delivery. <laughs> um, I'm great. I'm excited to talk about uh, everything that's been going on, Kylan's HOH, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, excited to get into the stock watch as well. All right. Well, we have, are, of course, here to talk about everything that happened on the feeds uh, over the last week here and uh then we're gonna rate all of the players left in the game uh from one to ten based on how well they're doing in the game this week should be a lot of fun as we talk through the week a lot has changed since last week um last week melissa we were having a conversation about uh the cookout and uh whether or not they were uh going to really uh be in a very dominant position moving forward uh this week it does appear that uh the cookout really has solidified a hold on this game that seems very unlikely uh, that it will be let go. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to lie. I am disappointed because, you know, I do love to see, you know, as we get down the stretch, I, I did really think it was a situation where, and I think Mel talked about this on the um, update this morning, where it's like the fun part is, is that, you know, you have these sort of alliances that have these external, like, quote unquote pawns. And the fun part is seeing them fight for their pawn and like try and keep their pawn as the last remaining pawn in the game or anything like that. And you're really not seeing that. It does seem to be, I mean, it could just all be posturing. It could be like, oh, I don't care about Derek X or like, oh, I don't care about Claire, put her up next, you know? But like, it does seem like everyone's kind of like, yeah, who cares? Put this person up, put this person up. I really don't care. Um, so I, I don't love that part of it because I really was hoping to see like some like jockeying for position and I'm not really getting that. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I also feel like, um, I, I think, you know, as great as all the members of the cookout getting to the end would be for, you know, the cause, um, as they say, I, I do think that like individually their individual games, I don't think it's in their best interest to have the cookout as a final six at the end, um, for like, them as an individual. Um, so I really don't know what's going to happen. And I kind of wish that some of the players were playing a little more selfishly, just like for the fun of it for me to watch. But, you know, I totally um, understand why they'd want to stick together because, you know, they're really strong. And why wouldn't you want to just stick to stick with like a strong dominant alliance? And I get that. But at the same time, like, what happens when it comes down to the end? Like, how are they going to decide the winner at that point? So, you know, I'd prefer not to have to wait till we get to final six to actually see some like things happen, but you know, it'll be good anyway, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And like, and as you said, it's not in everybody in the cookout's best interest to have the cookout as a final six, but then I totally understand why they're doing it because it's like, this will never happen again. Mm -hmm. Like they, for years to come, we're going to be here talking about Big Brother 35 and they're going to be saying, we can't let a cookout situation happen. We yep. can't let it happen. And so it's like, okay, they're given this one opportunity and that's why you always see Tiffany so torn. You see um, Hannah so torn. I mean, big D torn in different ways, but just because people get on his nerves. But you see them torn because it's like, okay, this is not what is best for me in the situation. This is not how I get the win, but bigger picture. And I know so someone put out a, a tweet that was like, they did, they had that, that speech from Davon last season. And then at the end it showed the cookout and it's like, she was doing it for all these past players and then doing it for future players. And it's like, 
we don't know when this will, this type of casting will happen again um, in a situation where the cookout can do this. So I think it's still interesting to see how conflicted they are and how they're rearranging who should leave first and how they're trying to see, okay, maybe even how can we get someone in the cookout maybe out with at, at seven rather than making it to the final seat six. I don't think it's a done deal. I think there are too many fractures happening um, for that to happen, but I, I appreciate the effort because I know this is a, a one and done situation. Yeah. It's, it all, it's, it is also interesting to me. Uh, you know, I, I think something that I've learned at least about myself when it comes to watching big brother is that um, there are different ways for me, at least to appreciate a season or the gameplay of a season. Um, I think that's probably obvious at this point, since I did enjoy last season and I did enjoy Big Brother Canada seven and I did enjoy pretty much any season of the show uh, in its own different way. Um, like I, I don't mind as much when it's a steamroll, but it certainly means that the week to week, the day to day is a little bit less interesting, a little bit less exciting. Um, but I think that what I do enjoy is when I see something that feels unique. And this very much is unique. Um, we've never seen a group of six people so dedicated to being the last six. We've never seen anybody play the way that they're playing right now, which genuinely is selflessly um, to, to a degree. Um, and they're playing in, a, in such a team-oriented way that, uh, that they are actively uh, working to put their own people in the firing line uh, mm -hmm. because they genuinely feel that that is what's best for the group as a whole to make final six. And so it's almost like, sure, you know, for the Claire's and the Derek X's of the world, like there's not a lot of light at the end of this tunnel. Um, but what I'm watching for now is like, can they succeed at making it to the final six exactly? Can they optimize that path? Um, will one of them stray at least a little bit and be like, well, I wouldn't really mind if Derek X won at final seven. Um, and if they do, if they do end up uh, making it to the final six, where do they go from there? Um, and I, I don't know, there's something, there's something very interesting to me about, uh, how this is going to play out. Um, even though it is starting to look like things are going to be solidifying into place and they're probably not going to be as exciting. There's probably not going to be a, a lot of power shifts from this point forward. Um, I don't know. I, for me, there's still there's still something of interest to find here, and uh, and it's also uh, I think very interesting to examine the players as, as that are a part of this. Um, you know, you do have Tiffany, who is so torn. Uh, I mean, Tiffany comes into this game, big fan of the game. Um, do, it's dominating the game. I mean, Tiffany, in my eyes, the way that she was playing in the first few weeks of the game. Um, was on her way. And I even said this. I mean, I tweeted this out in like week one that I felt like Tiffany was, we were watching a legend in the making. Um, and uh, and not to say that Tiffany is not or will not be a legend, um, but she has sort of, she. I think she saw that path for herself and she actively decided, I have to take a different path here. Um, and I'm going to go in a different way and I'm going to try something something else. Um, and instead we're having this, uh, this, this cookout thing, which, um, you know, I'm, some people might be like, I would have preferred to see Tiffany run this game. Yeah, um, I would have, like to Melissa. be honest. <laughs> I know. Look, like I totally can appreciate, like you're saying, I totally can appreciate the cookout, like, and appreciate the fact that these are like, we don't usually see a group of people so united with something like anything really that strong that they will take each other to the final six, no matter what, even if it's detrimental to, to their individual game. I mean, for the most part, like if you're in a six person alliance and you're like, yeah, we're going to make it to the final six. And then a few of the people start kind of acting against your interest and you're kind of like, Hey, I don't really see how them being with me helps me moving forward. And like, you don't really see people continue to take those people on to the final six and stick by them. You usually see people turn on them. Um, and so I think that this is certainly an interesting situation because you don't see that very much. However, I will say I do wish that we could see Tiffany play selfishly because I think she could be amazing. Um, and I think she, like you said, I think she could be a legend, like a legendary player strategist, not just like a legendary character person on the show. Like I think that she could have been something really, really special. And I don't think that it's not, I don't think that it's that she doesn't have it in her or something like that. It's just that like, I'm afraid that she's putting the interests of the SIGs 
um, over her own interests to the point where she could lose this game and she didn't need to lose this game. Um, I, I absolutely think she would have dominated had she just, you know, been selfish about it. And I get why she wouldn't, but like, you know, it would have been fun to see. Yeah, it, it's tough, too, because it, even before this podcast, she was talking to Hannah and saying, like, look, at this point, I'm losing. I'm playing it for you to get further. The, but, like in that moment, in the scenarios they were talking about, because she can't she in this present moment, she can't see that path thinking about, OK, final six being the cookout. So, of course, I know she's going to continue to think through options and in ways to to use Derek X and Claire to get a little bit further and position herself a little bit better because she she is. We've seen it. She's competitive. She's strategic. She is. She wants to get to the end. Um, this time it's my dog. So like, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, she wants to get to the end and I don't see her just bowing out. I don't see her getting the final six. Someone wins, puts her up and she's like, as long as one of you win, I think she's going to fight to the end because that's just in her character. But I think it's like, it's a situation where, okay, am I going to be upset that I played hard and and lost like final four or i'm going to be upset that we had this opportunity to really make history yes we made history by making a jury but really make history by having the first african-american winner and then someone else wins when they have positioned themselves to have the number so it it yeah it i see both sides of the coin where it's like she's she was doing amazing she's doing amazing sweetie but <laughs> it's like i i it, <laughs> you know it's that card she's dealt by being on this season. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I find it, I find it really interesting either way, honestly. And, and, and just like the fact that we're seeing somebody make that kind of choice. I don't think we've ever seen somebody make that kind of choice that they're actively going to choose a harder path uh, for the sake of something that they feel is greater than themselves. And that's uh, kind of true of at least a few of them um, in the cookout. Certainly some of them don't exactly have another option anyway. Um, but uh, but it, but that that is interesting to me and, and worth uh, worth seeing on, on the screen. Like, I, I don't know, for me, I guess I don't always need action packed excitement every single day of the season. I do feel like we've had some some very exciting weeks and very exciting days. Um, but um, but I, I guess uh, I guess I'm less critical of the overall direction of seasons in general. Um, however, I do still think that I would like to see the cookout face adversity. I would like to see them have to struggle to, to get to their goal because that's the, always the most entertaining. Um, and I do think that primarily these twists that they've introduced have uh, really impeded the ability to uh, introduce adversity to the cookout as um, as it's uh, it's it's going to be very difficult for anybody, even if they are able to figure out what's going on, uh, to do anything about it when we have these twists in the way. Now, the last time we were on the roundtable, we did not know about these twists. Uh, we were speculating about them. Um, but we have since discovered that this first twist was a second veto. They won by betting on the players in the veto. Next week's twist will be the roulette or the roulette. Still haven't figured out where, where that came from. Um, <laughs> and uh, a random person will end up being, um, or, or it's sorry, the winner of the roulette will uh, take one of the people off the block that was nominated, and then a random person will replace them on the block, uh, random except for the person that they saved and the per and themselves and the uh, the HOH. Um, and then the third twist is the uh, the coin of destiny. They flip the coin and they will be able to take over the HOH anonymously if they do that. Um, there are just a lot of aspects of this twist that I, that I do like. I do like the, um, the, uh, the complexity of, of some of these. I think it gives the players a lot to talk about and think about um, and have to play the game in a slightly different way, which is, again, always interesting to me. Uh, however, I think a lot of the ways that this twist is implemented has fallen flat um and uh, and really backfired i mean is could you have done anything worse than give your favorite the favorite players of america uh a hundred dollars like do you not realize the target that you're putting on their back uh when you do that um and you you they probably thought well it's it's anonymous nobody will know. of course they'll know of course everybody will know that's what happens people figure it out 
Um, and uh, even if Derek X hadn't told a soul, they would have all known that he had $100. Um, and essentially what they've done with this twist is said, hey, Ma Majority Alliance, here's the order in which you should evict people. By, by order of how much the audience likes them, um, and, uh, oh, also we're going to make it very difficult for anybody to rise up against you, uh, <laughs> because these twists will really screw them over if they try. Um, I like, I just feel like it couldn't have possibly backfired more than, uh, uh than, than what they've done here, Melissa. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, you know, it, it's hard also because like, the cookout also got like the majority alliance also got high scores, like also got, you know, good scores. So it wasn't like one of those like, oh, man, oh, no, the majority alliance were not liked by America. Like we need to turn things around or I need to think of something else for my game or anything like that. It was just like, oh, yeah, OK, they like us. They also like Derek. OK, cool. Now he's a has a lot and we need to be worried about him. It's like, oh, OK, wait, <laughs> this is not good. Like I feel like for these sorts of like, OK, the audience votes. And, you know, re it reveals like the order of preference that the audience likes. Normally it's like, okay, the majority alliance all gets bottom scores and the people on the outside get near the top. And then the majority alliance knows that like they're hated and that if they, they need to kind of jump ship or whatever they decide. Um, in this situation, it was kind of like evenly distributed. So it was like, oh, okay, well doesn't change my mind about the cookout, doesn't change my mind about like who to get out, uh, aside from like knowing that I'm right and needing to get out these people who've gotten high uh, or like high dollar amounts or whatever. So it's not ideal, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think don't it's tough. It. I think it's tough too, because this is a likable house. I mean, mm -hmm. I think everybody's likable. I even the all the people who got 50s, I like them. And then it's like the who, person that gets on my nerves the most, Big D, gets 100. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, well, that's <laughs> the cat. Yeah, what the heck? Apparently, I have no influence. Claire got 50. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. I think it's rigged. It must be. There's no way. Hey, everyone, even a le <laughs> Everyone you, was telling me they were voting for Claire. You voted were they with lying two whole to phones. me? I voted with two whole phones. Even Heck. Alyssa's business partner, who has 2 million followers, said text this number for Alyssa, and she got 50. So mm. don't be crazy. down on yourself. <laughs> who are all these people that are voting <laughs> for Big D and Brittany? Those were, like, shocking to me. And when I was seeing the updates, like, saying, like, that, like, because I was trying to figure out, like, who got what, like, what's the deal? And people were starting to say, like, Oh, it seems like Big D and Brittany got 100. I was like, okay, that's wrong. They're clearly like just telling everyone they got 100 and they really didn't or like that's speculation. But then they did get it and I was like so shocked. I mean, not that I don't like Brittany, but I felt like she was like, you know, mid-tier, whatever. No one really cares. And I was shocked that like Tiffany didn't get 100 and like I, Hannah, I thought Hannah would get 100. I thought Claire would get 75. I mean- Apparently, I know nothing. I don't know <laughs> anything about who likes who. Clearly, I can't get those uh, the questions right at the end of the podcast literally ever. So yeah, the, I, the, the voice of the people moniker. Uh, I, I feel like at some point hey, we're going to have the voice to, uh... of the correct people. Oh. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm telling you. I'm I am merely speaking the words of the people who are correct. You Everyone truly else sound wrong. like a populist at this point. <laughs> yes. Uh, so. yeah, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Well, the last time we left off here, uh, of course, uh, Christian was still on the block uh, and uh, we did not think it was likely he would stay. He did not end up staying, maybe put up more of a fight than anticipated. Um, but uh, Christian does end up going after a failed flip attempt. Um, failed because of Aza and Big D following Brittany up the stairs, uh, it turns out. Um, we then got to this week, Kylan wins the HOH. We saw this on the episodes. He decides to put Claire on the block um, first because he wants to take a shot at Tiffany. Tiffany does some good work uh, sort of repairing that relationship. Claire does some good work um, being like, hey, I'm on your side. Uh, Hannah uh, makes some good cases uh, to uh, to not put up uh, Claire and to put up 
Alyssa instead. Um, and that shifts the target to Alyssa. However, the following morning, Xavier turns it back around away from Alyssa, and that defaults it back to Claire. So Claire ends up on the block next to Big D. However, once we got the money awards, as we've been talking about, Big D got 100, Derek X got 100, and Brittany got 100. Brittany did not spend any of her money, and uh, this gave Tiffany um, and uh, anybody else that did not want Claire targeted some great talking points to uh, talk people into going after Brittany so that she could not afford future twists uh, with all of the money that she got. Uh, so when it came time for the veto, Kylan put his bet on Alyssa. Alyssa won the veto. Kylan got his second veto. He used it on Claire and put Brittany up in her place with Brittany as the target. Now, we do have a little bit of intrigue here as it's basically impossible for Brittany to stay this week. However, uh, Derek X and Claire are pushing pretty hard to try and flip the vote. Uh, they cannot succeed, but if they push hard enough and they get enough resistance, they may start to see that something is wrong uh, because they can't get anywhere. Um, and that's basically where we have left off with this week, Asia. Yeah, and I think it's... And I was thinking, like, in what situation would they have to really push for this? What what people can they pull in? And obviously, it's everyone outside of the cookout. Um, but even approaching Sarah Beth, realizing how much of a hold Kylan has on her, that she's do she does not want to go against the HOH by any means by not flipping the vote this week. I think that that will help the cookout because they are not able to isolate a certain group of people being opposed to the vote flip. Um, if like Sarah Beth was on board, Derek X was on board. Um, so I think it's, I'm, I'm, I love to see, I'm, I'm liking that Claire is trying and that she recognizes that, you know, this may be a situation to go ahead and get big D out. So I'm glad to see that because so many people have been saying that she's just, Tiffany's secretary and uh, she just does whatever Tiffany wants and we haven't seen much from her. Um, it's just we, because we haven't had to at this point because why be the lead and rock the boat if you don't have to? So I'm glad that she's trying, but I'm interested to see what conclusion she comes to at the end of this week once it's all said and done um, after attempting this. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting situation. Um, and it could lead to good things for Claire and Derek if it tells them enough, uh, information. However, it is also putting a bigger target on their backs. Um, as, uh, again, their, uh, their allies are not necessarily thinking the most, um, self-interestedly, um, and, and that is something that again, I think is particularly difficult to predict. Um, there's no reason to suspect that uh, that Hannah or Tiffany would rat you out or try to put a target on your back in the coming weeks because why would that possibly benefit them? It doesn't unless their motive is different than just full on winning, right? They have their own win conditions that uh, that nobody else knows about, and that is that is very difficult to counter. Uh, as um, as they're uh, experiencing. However, um, it's not that simple either. Tiffany and Hannah just today have been talking about like, wait, doesn't it make sense to keep our people around until the end? <laughs> I guess, yeah, it kind of does. Because then, because what happens is if, if it's like Sarah Beth is in seventh, then, and then she wins the HOH, you're screwed, Tiffany. Like, uh, <laughs> she's coming for you. Um, and uh, she's like, yeah, you're right. Um, wouldn't it be great if we kept Derek X around until seven? And Hannah's like, ah, yeah, it's just not feasible. There's too many people targeting him. <laughs> yeah, because you've been telling them <laughs> to target right. him. That's why. What do you mean, unfortunately, you did this? I almost made a meme today that was the one where you shoot the person behind you and it says Hannah to Derek X's game. Oh, yeah, man, I'm so unfortunate that we can't keep him to seven. I really wish we could. Everyone wants to target him, though. <laughs> what does it say? Like, when you have short memory, like memory of, like, a goldfish? Yeah. <laughs> like, does she truly, has she forgotten that she's been planting these seeds? Um, it's, it's just, it's very silly. 
Um, but look, maybe she's now come to the realization that she needs to start reversing that work. She already had, I mean, she was trying to get him evicted next week. Um, and then, then tried to start backtracking. No, not next week, the week after. Um, but, uh, but, but the, the damage is kind of done at this point. A lot of the arguments that she's made against Eric X and, you know, the fact that she's been working to prevent the relationship between him, Alyssa and X from developing um is uh it has has really uh, done done the damage uh x and kyland were talking today about how they do want uh Ad derek x to be evicted next week even though it's not what hannah would prefer um hannah thinks that she's making a good case when she says if derek x leaves next week then Alyssa, sarah beth and claire are not going to be targeting each other but they don't really care uh, at this point, especially X, who's just like, I just don't want this guy to beat me. Uh, <laughs> like, it's, he keeps, he got $100. He's going to get a coup d'etat. He's going <laughs> to beat me in competitions. I want this guy out, which is absolutely the correct move for Xavier. <laughs> yeah, this has been like one of the frustrating things about this cookout situation with the pawns is that, you know, they, they're they not fighting for their pawn to stay. And if anything, they're like pushing for their pawn to go to like prove their loyalty or something. Like, I don't know. It doesn't, I understand being like, like trying to distance yourself from the pawn and kind of be like, yeah, whatever. I don't care if they go. I, like, I'm, I'm all about the cookout. I'm not about this guy. He's just a pawn to me. But like, to be the one who's like pushing for it as like the next person to go or like giving these reasons why the person needs to leave, like, or like Kylan's order saying that he wants Sarah Beth to go maybe next or whatever. Like, it's like, why are you guys saying that sort of thing? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, obviously like, okay, say, yeah, no, I'm fine. If we lose them sooner, like, like sooner rather than later, who cares? Like, but, and like, oh, well, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And then once you get to it, like try and scramble and figure out a way to like, make sure that person stays, but like, you shouldn't be the one pushing. Like, obviously if someone brings it up to you and says like, Hey, uh, like, are you cool if we try and get so-and-so out like in, within the next few weeks? It's like, yeah, of course. Sure. Whatever. But like, you shouldn't be the one to bring it up. And you certainly shouldn't be the one to say that they should be the first one to go like, yeah, but why get them out two weeks from now? We might as well just get them out next week. It's like, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, you should be like, trying to find ways to subtly like emphasis on subtle like try and keep your person safe or as like the last pawn standing or whatever like you shouldn't be out there pushing for them to go it just does not make any sense i i i don't know what people are doing when they do that yeah i i think it's because they formed they they have actually formed genuine relationships with their pawns and so they're like, if there were no cookout, this would be the person they're riding with till the end. I don't think any of them genuinely, maybe outside of Hannah, because she is playing very hard. I think I don't think any of them genuinely, once it's in front of them, would actually, yes, want that person to go. They may try to figure out a situation where maybe this person doesn't have to go. But yeah, bringing it up, I think, is them mm -hmm. trying to game and make it seem like, Look, what y'all been seeing is not true, but they but everyone's doing it. So it's like they're I think they're just all playing so hard <laughs> that it's like, it's like it's a lot. It's like you're they're like at the top of this hill and they like push the cart down off the top of the hill and they're like, Well, I'll just catch the cart before it hits the bottom. Like I'll just catch it. And it's like, but you didn't need to push it in the first place. You could have just <laughs> sat on the hill with the cart up there. Like I don't I don't know why you're like the one who's like I'll just be the one to push it like let other people push it and then you can try and save it but like try not to let anyone push it in the first place it just it, I don't I don't see the logic behind it um in terms of like individual game obviously in terms of like the cookout as a whole yeah it makes sense to have like the bigger threats go out first yes of course but like and maybe that maybe that is where this all stems from is that like no one's really playing like a selfish game anymore and they're all just about the cookout and it's like however we can get the cookout there is what matters to me and I really don't care uh, what happens to me or my pawn or whatever. I, then maybe that's the situation and that's why I'm just like not seeing it. But like if anyone's trying to play to win, they need to keep their pawn around. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very Kyland of them to, cause I feel like they're, they're, they're thinking in terms of like, well, 
personally, I love Claire and I don't want Claire to go. <laughs> but that, but, but because they feel that bias, they're trying to be like, nah, I am for the cookout. Like mm -hmm. I, that's what I'm dedicated to. And like, I, I, maybe some of it is a bit like they feel the need to like, uh, like prove the loyalty to the cookout. Like, no, I'm willing, I'm not going to fight. I'm not selfish. Um, like I, I am for this. Um, it's, it also, it's also very like strangers on a train. Like, uh, like, uh, Hey, if you, if you take out Derek X for me, I'll take out Alyssa for you. <laughs> um, and, uh, cause they can't do it themselves. Um, so it's a very strange situation that we've got going on here. Um, and, uh, it seems like they're maybe starting to wake up to, you know, there is not really, I mean, basically the way I see it. Uh, they're all trying to figure out the optimal way for the cookout to make the final six, or at least that's the sort of narrative um, for why certain people need to go at certain times, right? Uh, that's what Hannah's talking about, Tiffany, Kyland, um, Aza, and Big D. Xavier, not talking about that quite as much. Uh, as long as it's not Alyssa, he's pretty cool with what's <laughs> going to go on. Um, so, uh, that's why I am, uh, happy with Xavier this week. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but they're all, so they're all trying to like optimize how to get the cookout to the final six. In my view, the order in which people get eliminated matters very little. Um, I mean, like take out Derek X next. That's the biggest thing beyond that. Like just win the competitions and continue to hold people into into your you know side piece thing, uh, and you're gonna be fine. Like you're trying to optimize for like a 0.5 percent increase of a thing, whereas it's like a five to ten percent increase of a thing, probably more, um, more like 15 percent increase of a thing if you keep your person for yourself for once you get <laughs> to six uh, right. or five or whatever to have your person there. So you're like, well. Theoretically, I'm going to gain a 0.5% chance of the cookout being in the final six, a 0.5% chance higher that the cookout will be in the final six. Um, but I'm sacrificing a 15% advantage uh, at the final six for it. It's like, that seems absurd to me. Um, but uh, but I, I think uh, perhaps, you know, the mindset is like, you know, we can't really, uh, we can't sacrifice anything. Like, this is important and we need to get there. Yeah, it's so hard to of uh, just thinking about other people figuring this out in terms of when you're saying like the order. So they're thinking like, okay, Claire is likely to figure this out. Derek X is likely to figure this out. So maybe it's good they go sooner rather than later. But it's like if Claire were to sit down and think of what's best for Tiffany's game, let me map this out. She wouldn't come to the conclusion of the cookout. And so it's like even if – even if they were to decide, let's do a flip, and then the votes don't come out right, she's gonna be like, Sarah Beth, man, <laughs> that Sarah Beth did it, did it again. And so I think that's one thing that they do have going for them that you it, they can't make it make sense for their games. Even if Derek X were to think about Hannah's game and what's best for her, he's not gonna come to that conclusion. I think it's the fact that they, you know. I'm trying to think of a situation where people have been playing for a, a cause other than we get along with these people, we have the comp beast, or we have all the social threats in one alliance, and we're just trying to get to the end. Um, besides, like, maybe family members uh, in the past, like, I mean, Dick and Danielle, it, it, it's hard to think about that because maybe one thing that will help people understand the cookout is it's like they're a family. They don't get along they it's it's like they were this is the family that they were given and so they're trying to make it work the you know deep down i want to see you succeed but do i always agree with you do i have a tiffany oz relationship absolutely but it's like that's not going to be enough to want me to put this person on the block and send them home um so yeah it's just it's it's interesting mm. uh yeah and and it really is because you know uh theoretically you know, I, I think that um, you could look at it from the perspective of Tiffany, where you're like, if I can keep Derek X to seven and he wins and he takes out Kylan, she wants him to take out Kylan, but like, 
let's be real. He needs to take out Xavier if she wants a better chance of winning. Um, uh, but uh, if that happens, like even worst case scenario at that point, he wins at six, at seven, then he wins at six and at five and at four. And then at three, like he's unstoppable. He gets to the final two. Oh no, he's destroyed the cookout, except they control five of the nine jury votes. Mm -hmm. So he didn't destroy the cookout. Yeah. They still win. They still win if that's what they, if that's the path they want to take. So mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, that's, that's kind of the thing um, that, that could be taken. But again, that's not really the path that they're looking for at this point. They're looking for the six in the end and uh, two of them in the final two and just uh, uh, like the utter, utter domination of the game. Um, and I think that they can make it. Uh, one of the questions I asked on the survey this week was, do you think the cookout will make it to the final six? Um, and the audience, uh, the audience is at this point in time, um, a, around 60%. Yes, they think that the cookout will be the final six. So that means 40% said no, they're not going to make it there. And that's a fair, that's a fair guess as well, because no matter how dominant they are right now, all it does take is one competition win, either at HOH or at Veto at Final Seven. And just like that, the dream mm -hmm. uh, for Final <laughs> Six, at least, dies. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, those odds alone are pretty, pretty big, um, which is sort of, again, why, like, trying to optimize for six is kind of silly, because all it does take is that one competition win. Um, but, uh, but 60%, and I'm inclined to agree. I think that they are pretty likely at this point to make this final six happen. Asia, what do you think? I think so. I think it, it will take just one person like winning out at seven outside of the cookout. Yes. But I think it could even happen as soon as next week with let's say Aza wins and she's able to implement yeah. this plan that she That's wants. To, true. She wants to put up two cookout members to try to game the twist. And I'm like, there is no guarantee there could be very well be a situation where this roulette is the it's it's fun or whatever and someone else in the cookout is selected now you have had three people in the cookout on the block during your hoh not smart. I'm like, this is the only time this entire game I have agreed with Big D that that's <laughs> not the move. <laughs> but it's like, it, it, that would be just bizarre. But I think it will take something like that happening for two people um, in the cookout to end up on the block. But I, and I actually think it, even if Aza is in HOH next week, it could happen the following week that someone could win or like, let's say a Sarah Beth wins and or Claire and puts up Kylan and Xavier. I don't think it's just it. It's just far fetched to think that two people from the cookout will end up on the block. If yeah, Derek it's X, not impossible. If yeah. Derek X wins HOH next week, who's he going to put up? I mean, that's still up in the air. The problem is that they keep running through scenarios and then being like, "Well, the roulette thing kind of messes with that." And because basically, how next week works and why they end up talking in circles a lot is that one of the people that you put on the block will be lock safe for the rest of the week, guaranteed. So you have a 50% chance of, you know, uh, say you say you put up a target. Say you wanted to target Kylan, you put up Kylan and Sarah Beth. Uh, you have a 50% chance of Kylan coming off the block and being safe from, I assume, Renom as well. Just completely safe this week. So uh, basically, you can either put nobody on the block that you want to target to complete pawns. Uh, one of them will come off, another random person will go on, and then rely on the veto to get your target up there. Or you put two targets on the block, one of them comes down for sure, and hope that the veto isn't then also won by the other target or used on the other target. And now you've got two targets both still in the game and potentially no other targets that you wanted to target. Um, and so it's a very tricky situation to navigate. Add on top of that, the minefield of the cookout that they do not know about and the fact that in order to take out any real target, they're going to need two specific cookout members on the block. Uh, specifically two cookout members on the block. Um, and it's all the more difficult. So basically, I think that Derek X would love to target uh, Xavier um, if he could. Uh, he'd love to he'd love to put up, uh, you know, any any one of these people he'd love to put up. He talked about Big D would be somebody that he could go after uh, if he won next week. Um, but it really it's so dependent on what happens with the roulette power and uh, and who gets taken off and what the ultimate plan becomes. And you have to, again, consider that uh, Tiffany is going to be in his ear talking about 
uh, and with how complicated it all is, all Tiffany needs to do is come up with like a reasonable sounding solution to their problems. That's like, uh, well, if you do it this way, then you've guaranteed X because <laughs> X as in X, uh, because um, because of whatever, right? And uh, and that way just also happens to guarantee that two cookout members don't end up on the block, but it does guarantee that, you know, the target remains on the block and and just like that, the target's not gonna go. Uh, so that's why I've been looking at this twist as like next week is kind of, uh, <laughs> kind yeah. of uh, you know, lock it in already un unless some something like Aza's plan goes. To I just genuinely don't think that they'll let Aza do this plan um, because it doesn't make any sense. Uh, it makes a certain amount of sense, but it, the, <laughs> the risk doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but uh, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, oh boy, that definitely <laughs> complicates things. Mm -hmm. I think with an Oz HOH, no one has a say. <laughs> like, okay. I think I can well, imagine she said it. She would ask the opinion that everybody would have to co sign it, except for that mother at for <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, oh man. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? Are we, are we ready to get to the stock watch? I think we're ready for I'm the ready. stock watch, but I feel like I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> right. Like well, who knows anymore? Let's let's try and figure it out here uh as we talk stock. Here we go. This is what we've got here. Um you need like a stock watch song. <laughs> yeah. Do, right? Um here we dance. is it uh work the butt. Work the butt. There we go. <laughs> that's that works. Um, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or it could, it could be, uh, for the big brother Canada nine, um, uh, fans, uh, it, it's, uh, it could be that, uh, should we do the stock watch? Oh, we could, couldn't we? There we go. <laughs> oh, there we could. go. <laughs> uh, I've got the soundboard back. Yes. Um, all right. Let's get into this here. This is where we rate the players from one to 10 um, and based on how well they're doing in the game this week. This tends to be a combination of uh, sort of long-term prospects. How likely are they to win the game? Uh, how safe they are in the short term? And uh, and also how well they're doing in this specific week. What have they done? Have they really screwed up or have they done uh, very good work this week? Some typical, typically some combination of the three uh, or you're a mon and you just, uh, you just rate willy nilly. You just do um, you. You just you just write with <laughs> chapstick. Um, and so. I think this week is also hard because it's like for some of these people, it's like, yeah, they're they they did well this week. They're not going home, but also they literally won't win this game because the cookout's gonna like just vote them out. And also and also like not even that. Like the only way someone who's not in the cookout will win this game is if they're sitting in the final two with someone else who's not in the cookout and the odds of that happening are like zero. Pretty so like much. Like essentially, essentially <laughs> like we're all saying right here that like Alyssa's not going to win this game. Brittany's not going to win this game. Claire is not going to win this game. Derek X is not going to win this game. Sarah Beth is not going to win this game. Long Let's clip prospects. this. Let's clip yeah. this. So like, on finale night. <laughs> that's the thing that. is like that, that's the frustrating thing because it's like, I don't, I don't, I have to say, like, I don't love the idea of, like, all these people don't even have a chance. Like, it does not matter what they do. It does not matter at all. They're not going to win this game. Well, but it's like. Uh, not I, impossible. I right. I do not by any means think this is a steamroll. It may appear that way by the numbers, but these people are actively, I don't think, I don't think any week has been boring. I think that things have changed and I don't think it's any different than any other major alliance. Like last season, were we talking about the committee saying like no one who's outside the committee is going to win? Of course, someone in the committee did win. It's because they have the numbers and they work their way to the end. So I think it's a similar situation. No, I'm not saying it's any different. I'm just saying that like because now we've gotten to jury and the cookout is all still here. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm thinking that way. Like if it was, if we were like even just last week or uh, the week before, I'd be like, well, we don't know what's going to happen. But the fact that now the votes are, they already have the locked in votes right there of that whole alliance. 
Like they've all they, they've all remained intact to the jury. Like that means they already have built-in votes for someone in the final two. Yeah, I mean, this this is an interesting question, though, uh, to talk about because um, it, it is something that they have discussed, or at least Tiffany has. Uh, Tiffany has said, if a non-cookout member makes it to the final two, she's voting for them because that's impressive, right? Mm -hmm. um, and especially <laughs> if it's Derek X. She specifically said, if Derek X gets to the end, he is 100% getting my vote. Now, that was probably close to a month ago now. Um, <laughs> things may have changed. Um, and I don't know if, she would actually not vote for, let's say it's, you know, uh, I mean, I let's big make D. it the hardest, right? <laughs> let's make it big D versus Derek X. Do all five <laughs> that would be a members tough one. really give their votes to big D, including Tiffany? Um, I, I will eat think chapstick. <laughs> I, I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> no I didn't say that. It's too late, Asia. The, 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 the bet has been it. made. Uh, <laughs> it, it, in, it's, it's, it, you've signed it with blood. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't think it's impossible that Derek picks up at least one vote. Um, but but I, I don't even know if it would be like that because, it, I mean, it would be an interesting conversation because I don't, I, like, could Tiffany really be the one person to prevent the cookout's ultimate success at that point, right? Like, I don't know. Um, I think she would have to have at least a couple of other people that agreed that like, we got to give it to this guy. Um, so I think it's uh, tough because it would be like, it would be your thought of it, I guess would probably be like, okay, we have the opportunity to have the first black winner of Big Brother here in Big D. But then you also have to think to yourself like, is that the representative we want of the first black winner? Of, you know, it's like, it's like, I don't know if that's what we, we want. Like, like this? Us. Like, is, this, is, is this what we wanted? Like, is this, a, is it like the monkey's paw? Like, the, it's like, it's you, this is what you wanted, first black winner, but is this what you wanted? You know, like, I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, uh, the Thanos thing. Like, uh, what did it cost? Yeah. Right. Everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh boy, what, what do we do here? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, either right. way, at that point, I guess you're well, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, mm -hmm. let's let's talk through the ratings. Then we're gonna start with Alyssa. Um, it's not not Melissa, but Alyssa. Um, uh, Mel Melissa, why don't you start with Alyssa? Um, you know, I have to say, I've been impressed with Alyssa this week in terms of, you know, she's not on the block. She's not going home. She won the veto. Like I, I have to say, I thought she put in some good work. Um, you know, I, I do think I'm concerned for her moving forward. I don't know what she's going to do. However, I do feel like, um, X is going to try it. He seems to be one of the few people in the cookout who's actually trying to make sure that the, their pawn doesn't go home. And actually, Aza and Derek F were doing the same with Britney, but you know now at this point, that's not going to happen. So they can't really do anything about that. But I do think that X is putting in good work for Alyssa. Um, but I don't think that she's really got. I think she's got this false sense of like, oh, here's who I'm working with. But really, they're like, yeah, no, you're just a pawn to us. Um, and so that's a little concerning for me. But. Um, yeah, I, th I think I, I'm just, I have to stick with my five because she did win the veto. She did keep herself safe this week. So, yeah. All right, Asia, what do you think? So Alyssa was actually the only person I didn't come in here with a predetermined rating because I was so torn on her because, okay, yes, she's not on the block, but then I'm also thinking, well, she didn't win the veto because Kylan threw it to her, which I'm very interested to seeing tomorrow night how mm -hmm. that happened because they make it seem like he did a terrible job, <laughs> <laughs> which am I going to do? Um, and so then you have the situation where Kylan was very willing to put her on the block until her until Xavier came in. And so it was like Xavier's doing, not her doing. And before this week, so I'm thinking like, OK, she got a five last week, but Christian was her shield. So it's like, okay, if she ever goes on the block, she's going up with Christian, he's going to go home. But now I'm like, okay, if she goes on the block, who is she up against where she's not going home? So that makes me land at a four with Alyssa for this week. Hmm. I feel four. like you're you're changing my mind a little bit. 
Because I do feel like I do feel like my my rating really came from the fact that like X puts in the work to help her. Mm -hmm. But like yeah, I do think you're making good points in terms of like is that enough to like do anything? You know what I mean? It's like yeah. there's only so far that she can go with that. Um, especially if she doesn't have actual like allies. Um, let me let me think about this. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, I will say I've I've been between a three and a four um, on Alyssa. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I there are some things that I liked about her game this week. I like that she went and talked to Derek X. I like that she's trying to uh, reform that bond, if possible, to try and prevent him from going after her. And pretty successfully, um, he he's not really interested in targeting her at, at this point, which uh, is is a very good thing for uh, for her game. Um, because uh, at this point, there there are a lot, a lot fewer people that are looking to target her. Even you know, Hannah is not really looking at Alyssa anymore. They even Hannah and Tiffany considered. Well, if Alyssa is going to be the seventh, regardless of what we do, maybe we should just start working on our relationship with Alyssa now so that she's not exes when she gets there and instead she's <laughs> ours. Um, so with that in mind, um, her position has improved from where it was, but where it was was really bad. Um, and I still don't love that. Uh, I mean, for as much as she's putting in some work with Derek, She's making the same mistake she did the first time around where she's not putting enough work in with Derek. She's spending way too much time with Xavier. He is basically her new Christian. And uh, it's like that's her only speed in this game. She only occasionally ventures out to talk with other people. And she still does. It's not like she doesn't talk to other people. She still does the the basic requirements of what's necessary, certainly more than Sarah Beth does. Uh, so I guess a little bit above the basic requirements if Sarah Beth is the base baseline requirements. Um, but uh, she is it's definitely somebody who is still in danger moving forward into next week. And I mean, long term prospects are just so low here for Alyssa. It's trying to see the path where she wins this game is really tough uh, for me. So um, I think I think I will stick with the four just because of the work that Xavier has put in. She has put in some work. She's starting to look like one of the better placed pawns in the game. Um, and she may end up uh, in that seventh spot uh, and with some kind of chance to maybe break something open. But uh, it, this is not looking good. Uh, she's barely holding on to this four from me. Um <laughs> The audience. All right, I'm switching to a four. Okay, <laughs> Melissa also switched. To, the audience also went with a four for Alyssa. Um, and see, this is why. So we move on to Aza. Um, uh, and I just like immediately, I'm just like, if Alyssa's a four, can Aza <laughs> really still be at this point? Because last week it was like, okay, but this week, um, I think, uh, well, here's the thing. Uh, she's also played poorly this week, though. Um, and she's talking about going into next week doing all sorts of things that she shouldn't be doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, here's the thing. I'm going to give Alyssa a three. I'm going to go with the three because I need to give Aza the four. Um, <laughs> like, actually go back. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do that. Sometimes you need to calibrate properly. Um, sure. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so that's, <laughs> I apologize to Alexandra that runs this, <laughs> the, the, the spreadsheet here. Yeah, she's just um, like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I have to give Aza a four this week, and that's because her win equity I do think has increased, um, especially because there is a scenario where she wins, and that's sitting next to Big D. Um, and I think that that's great for her. The likelihood of her getting there is still very low. Um, she continues to not really bond with anybody outside of the cookout. I mean, her jury management is basically non-existent. Um, when it comes to anybody outside of the cookout and inside of the cookout, it's also pretty non-existent. So uh, I really do feel like her only chance is Big D, which means she's going to have to win her way there or Big D is going to have to win. Like either of them are going to have to win to get themselves to the final two. Uh, and they should be taken as a pair to the final three. And nobody plans on doing that at the moment, uh, which is a, a testament to their lack of uh, strategic and social ability at this point. Um, so... Uh, I don't love all of that. I also don't love her plan about um, about next week nominating not nominating two cookout members. Um, 
and uh, and all of that. So I, I just I don't love where she is in the game. I don't love her win equity. Uh, I don't love what she did this week. And I also think that she's one of the more expendable people in the cookout. If something did go wrong and she ended up on the block next to somebody else, I think that she could be a uh, a, a casualty. Um, her or Big D could be a casualty over uh, some of the bigger targets um, in the game. As long as, I mean, Kylan's the most likely to be the casualty at this point, <laughs> but uh, followed by Aza or Big D. I do not think that Hannah, Tiffany, or Xavier would be casualties at this point because I don't think any of the three of them would be up against each other. They would be up against one of the other three, and one of those other three, I think, would be the one to go in the very unlikely situation where uh, they um, they do that. So uh, that's where I am with Aza. Um, Asia, what do you think? Yeah, Aza's a tough one because she... I mean, I think it. she just realized kind of like last week that she was playing Big Brother. And so this week we're seeing her finally get out of the bed, finally like talk to people about the game and not just, oh, why are you lying? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And now we're seeing her talk more about the cookout and how to get them further. She doesn't have the best ideas <laughs> as we as we're seeing, but I don't. I know that there's not currently a plan to automatically take her to final three um, and, and for someone to take her to final two even. Um, but I'm like, when they make it to six or if they make it to six, if the cookout truly makes it to six, who's saying Aza, Aza, she got, she, she's got to go first. No one, you know, like I just can't see that happening. So I'm like, she could very way stumble her way all the way to final four and then win something by chance and end up mm -hmm. final three or fi even final two. So because of that, I, I'm landing at a five this week for Aza. All right, Melissa. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like Aza last week was a five. And I think that this week she would still be a five due to the cookout. However, I do think that this week she played it really terribly i think that if without if it wasn't for the cookout she would have been out like long ago i think people would be over her little like thing where she's just like i'm not gonna answer questions or anything like that it's just like okay this is not how she you is play. the most influential player in the house that is true that is true <laughs> even still to this day um so yeah i i do feel like she is playing a little not great. And also she's losing either Brittany or Derek F this week, which is an ally of hers. Like that is bad for her. So, um, yeah, I gotta, I gotta go down to a four. All right. Uh, the audience also is at a four for Aza here. Um, so there it is. Uh, lots of fours, fours all around <laughs> for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, let's move on to Brittany, uh, Asia. How do you feel about Brittany? Brittany, Brittany. Um, well, she's tied her going on the block, so that's good that she doesn't have to go on the block anymore after this week. Mm. Um, I do feel for her because she, you know, she has been this pawn star, um, and she's just trying to play. She's like, who what does it even matter if I have targets? I'm going on the block anyway. So I feel I I do feel for her in that way. Um, I think that, you know, she would have felt better if everyone handled the HOH like Derek X handled his to make her feel a part of the plan when she was the pawn. Um, I, I don't like how Kylan is handling this situation where he has put her up and all of their conversations are beyond exhausting. Um, but in terms of her position in the game, it's all but a done deal that she's leaving this week. Um, I think anything that were to happen this week in regards to a vote flip is only going to affect future weeks. It's not going to affect this this vote. Um, and so for that reason, and the fact that she hasn't given up, she is not, she is still fighting. She's not just laying over and just calling and, and raising her, her, her flag. So I'll give her a two. Yeah, same here. I, I give her a two as well. Um, I think that she's doing the best that she can, but there's really no chance for her. And I think that, it's it's like I said in the beginning. I mean, she's not in the cookout. Like, there's no chance for her. So it's unfortunate because, you know, if there wasn't some big majority alliance, like hidden majority alliance, she would know, like, 
who to campaign to if it was like out in the open and majority alliance. But uh, unfortunately, like she she doesn't know who to campaign to. The outsiders don't know that they need to band together uh, against some a giant force. So, you know, I, I think that I, I don't want to give her a one because I do think she's doing the best that she can. And I don't think it's necessarily, you know, her fault that she's going home. I just think it's just not going to happen for her, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well, the audience, uh, gave Brittany a two as well. Uh, and, and, uh, and so did I, uh, I also <laughs> gave Brittany a two. So sad after such a good work, good week for her. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, I, the reason I'm giving her a two is that she there's virtually no chance she says uh, there is no chance she says this mm -hmm. week. I'm not even going to qualify. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever given a, a pure zero percent chance, but I, I'll give her a pure zero percent chance. Um, which again, though, uh, you know, I, I think it's something that that sometimes uh, goes for, forgotten, I guess, uh, with the ratings is that it's not purely on win equity, these ratings. We're not rating them purely on win equity. Uh, for myself, at least, I also uh, factor in how they play the week a lot. Uh, and that's why for me, in order to get a one, you need to both be virtually dead in the water and have played really poorly and put yourself in that position. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Brittany is uh, about as low as you can go in terms of positioning and win equity in this game because she is has no chance of winning, but she did not really play this week all that poorly. I mean, she should have played in the thing. Uh, she sh probably should have lied better about her money, um, but uh, but she hasn't really screwed herself up here. I mean, the audience screwed her more than anything. Um, and there's actually even an argument to be made that the twist screwed her over in a, a little bit here. Um, so uh, she's not she's not Frenchy. She, she's not Brent. Uh, she's she's gonna get a two from mm -hmm. me. Imagine the, the shock from the casuals when Brittany goes up tomorrow night and they're the two of their most loved players are yeah. on the block, meaning they're one like, of them no. is going home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Devastating. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. No. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's talk about Claire. Let's talk about Claire. Um, I'm already Whoa. seeing a few uh, very close votes here. Um, and uh, Claire is the first of many very close votes. Uh, the audience gave Claire a five out of 10. Uh, yeah. Very nearly a six, but they <laughs> went with the five. Melissa, how do you feel about that? Yeah, unfortunately, um, I have to agree. Um, I am very, number one, I, I feel... Uh, sad for Claire that like there really is no chance for her and I also uh, am a little upset with Claire because I feel like she is very naive like I feel like she's completely oblivious when it comes to all this stuff like when she came into this week and she was like well who could be on the block who could try Kylan be targeting it's like um you maybe you should think about yourself like it's like I don't understand why she thinks that she's in such a good position she's not in a good position I I I don't get it. I, I'm very upset um, because, you know, at, at the very least, like she should be like always questioning. I mean, does she really think she's in that good of a spot with Kylan when she hasn't spoken game with him in a long time? Like, I don't I don't understand where that came from. So um, I was upset with Claire and I really felt like after jury kicked in, like after jury started, she needed to like kick it up a notch. Um, and I still feel that way because I don't feel like she's really doing enough literally at all um so uh i really need her to step it up because i love claire so much um so yeah i mean there's really no chance for her unless she turns it on yes all right well uh i two two weeks ago i i put claire on notice i said claire <laughs> you're on notice <laughs> uh, you're get you're getting the seven for me, but unless something major happens, you are on your way down. She barely made a six from me last week um, because she was talking about going after making a big shot if she won this HOH. It would have done something. I mean, Claire winning this HOH could have meant an entirely different season uh, of of the show. Um, but that did not happen, and instead she hit the block uh, and. Uh, and I'll give her this. She is trying. 
she he, she's she can't see what she needs to do, but she sees that there's something she needs to do, and she's trying to figure it out. She's trying to push. That's why for me, it's gonna be higher than Alyssa, who is a lot more passive in her place in the game. Uh, Claire has Derek X. The two of them together could do some damage. She is trying to do those things, but almost because of that, she's now landing herself in more danger. Uh, and she almost went home this week. She very well could go home next week. So Claire, that's it. There's no more warnings. This is it. You are four, Claire. <laughs> Oof. You're Yikes. four. Yikes. Oh, I I love Claire. I can't wait to hear her talk about the game outside, like after the game, after the season is over. Um, I can't wait to hear her on podcasts. Um, but as far as the season goes, she, I mean, she's basically dead in the water. I and I and I was thinking, potentially lastly, I was thinking, okay, her and Derek X are two of the players that could potentially make it farther than some people in the cookout, given the correct situation, given the certain, the way it's it, it shaped. But the, with the, the fact that, the fact that it, there needed to be two vetoes this week for her to come off of the block. Um, I mean, come on. And, and, and the fact that Tiffany was just like, all right, well, you know, I got to keep it moving and I explore my other options. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, it, her game is, is a wash at this point. It sucks. And the fact that she hasn't given up, um, but I, I just don't see a way for her at this point. Um, and because of that, I got to give her a four. All right. Uh, there we go for Claire. Next, let's talk about Big D. Melissa, what do you think about Big D? Um... Uh, uh, you know, there's, it's not a non-zero chance that he goes home this week. So, I mean, I don't think he will. I but... think it's a zero chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. It, uh, you never know what's going to happen. Who knows? I mean, the odds of him going home this week are like zero. But the fact that he's on the block is not great for him. Um, but, oh, God, I don't know. I really don't know. I guess, I guess I'll just stick with my three, maybe. I don't because he's on the block. I'm gonna stick with the three. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's a three for me too. I, I, like, uh, yeah, he's in the cookout, but uh, he just has zero win equity at this point. Uh, like that, like being in the cookout is great for win equity. It's a great, I guess, for short term safety. His gameplay is very bad uh and his and his win equity uh even though he's in the cookout is very bad i mean there's mm -hmm. virtually no situation where he wins the game his best chance is against aza which is the least likely person to be in a final two uh with um and even then i do think that aza beats him uh nobody respects his game the people close to us don't respect closest to him don't respect his game the people uh who he's not close to don't respect his game Everybody understands that Big D is going to make it far. Nobody's crediting him for it. Um, they're just saying, yeah, unfortunately, Big D is going to make it far. Uh, and we're just going to have to deal with that. Uh, if he's in the final two, he's probably going to be like, aha, I did it. I masterminded the whole season. And everyone's going to be like, nah, dude, that what <laughs> happened. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a three for me. Until he wins something or actually starts managing the jury well or something uh there's just there's just nothing happening here for me when it comes to big d what do you think asia yeah and i don't trust him to win anything and and make a sound decision he thinks um he thinks that if he thinks he's the the head of the cookout now that he's gotten this hundred dollars that's only inflated his ego um he always thinks he is the one that knows the game better whenever people come to him explaining things and he thinks he has to give advice um yeah and like you said that who is he sitting against to win i think at this point the only person that's still in the house that he could sit against and win against is Brittany, and she's leaving this week so there's zero chance he wins this game at this point um and so 
and, and and it's unfortunate. Like you're in you're in an alliance that has the majority of the house, and you still are in the worst position, even than people that are not in that alliance. So yeah, I definitely agree, and I am sadly voting a three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, the audience actually a little more generous than us. The audience gave Big D a four. Four for Big D. Up from the three of the last two weeks. Um, probably a bit of, uh, we might call it a cookout bump um, here for <laughs> Big D. Um, as the cookout continues to uh, do very well here. So let's move on to Derek X. The other Derek in the game. Uh, now, I gave notice to Claire I also gave notice to Derek X and uh, boy, did he barely hold on to that seven for me last week. And uh, this is the thing. Um, he's losing. Uh, he's losing Brittany this week. That's a big loss for him. Um, he's uh, he's very much a target heading into next week. If X or Alyssa wins, he is in some trouble. Um his long term win equity is very low. His short term safety is not great. Has he played this week well? He honestly is not playing poorly. Similar to Claire. I mean, he's yeah. doing the best he can. Yeah. Uh, he's he's trying out there on those BB streets. Um, he's he's trying to pull over X. He's trying to nullify Alyssa. Um, he's trying to flip this vote. He's trying to get something working. He's, he's recognizing, and this is what I love from Derek X, he recognizes that something is completely wrong in this game that something is not adding up and that there has to be some other thing going on. I love that, especially from somebody that doesn't have a ton of game knowledge from watching the show. Uh, however, um, he knows it. I don't think he knows how urgently he needs to know it. Um, and uh, it's just not going to be enough. Um, he is in a slightly better position than Claire, just based on the fact that he does have the ability, I think, to potentially win out and potentially keep himself safe next week. I mean, he could win HOH. He could win a veto. Um, he could win that coup d'etat. He could be around for a little while longer. Um, and if he does make it to the end, I think he has the best case that a non-cookout member has to win the game. So he is holding on here for me at a five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Asia. same here. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for me, I think that he's the only person in that house who could very well win at the final seven, which is totally uh, demolishing the cookouts plan of being final six. I think if we had to put our money on one person who would probably win in that position, it very well could be him. I'm even thinking this next week, if it's a slip inside veto or slip inside HOH um, because of that potential with like winning BB, BB bucks, he could very well win. Um, and so I, I'm still pretty high on Derek X. I know that he is in a position of being a threat, especially for Xavier, but he has the potential to win. He's shown it time and time and time again. And the fact that Hannah and Tiffany are now recognizing they need him in order to not be casualties for the cookout. I, that, I, I like that. And so uh, I have to go with a six. A six from Asia. Yeah. Uh, well, this was a very close vote. It couldn't be closer from the audience here. Um, in fact, I'll give it a quick refresh just to see if it's changed since the last time. It has not. Uh, Derek X at exactly 6.5. He got a 7 from the wow. audience. Wow. Um, there it is. So the audience holding yeah. true to their 7. Hanging <laughs> on a thread. I, yeah, no, poor Derek X. I feel like he's just such a big threat to everyone right now. And the fact that he got a, a, a hundred um, in the vote, like is not good for him. Um, and yeah, I just, I feel like he, he, he's, his chance of winning is, is starting to really dwindle down. And I think he really needs to turn things around and like, and yeah, like you guys said, he's not playing a bad game. It's just that he doesn't realize that he needs to immediately like gather the troops and turn again, like turn people against the cookout. So I, I don't know if he's going to be able to do that um, at this point. So we'll see. I hope yeah. he can. And yeah. And again, like, uh, you know, for, for me, it's like, like, 
you know, Alyssa, Claire, and, and Derek X are all at like uh like two baseline for not being in the cookout. Uh mm -hmm. and then like yeah. anything they do above that, like uh to like playing better this week, be having a little bit of a better chance. Derek X and his competition wins makes him a little more likely to win. Uh they're they're crawling up those uh th these these ratings with those other factors um which is again why i want to remind this is not just about win equity um which uh you know is uh is certainly very important though as well um but here we are so let's talk about hannah let's talk about hannah um let's see uh asia what do you think about hannah dear dear chata um i have loved what i've seen with her i think that she has finally found her footing in terms of people respecting her game. Um, I'm so glad that Tiffany has finally recognized it. Uh, it took her a little while, a little over a month. <laughs> um, and I think that she has a good read on everything. I, I'm always on, like, if she, if I have an option on the feeds and she's on it, I'm looking at what she's talking about um, because I like to see her mind work. And I think she has a good handle on on how they can get to the six. But I know that, you know, it's not in her best interest to to get Derek out, X out as soon as she's saying. Um, and it's not in her best interest to even get him out even before they get to final six. Um, but in terms of how she's playing the game right now and who I think they'll go after once if they get to the six, I I'm going to, I'm really high on Hannah. I don't think she's doing worse this week than she was doing last week. And so I have to take into consideration where she landed last week and I'm going to give her an eight. An eight from Asia. Uh, the audience, a little bit more skeptical on Hannah. The audience <laughs> gave Hannah a seven. Uh, Melissa, what do you think? Yeah, um, I, I agree with the audience, to be honest. Um, I think that she is uh, very smart, and I think that, you know, she's in the cookout, so she's in a good spot. I'm concerned about the fact that she kept throwing Derek X out there. Um, I think that that uh, is not good for her. She needs to – and I think she's realizing that now, but I think that she really, like, can't afford to lose Derek X right now, and I and it she just needs to do a better job of protecting him. Um, rather than kind of throwing him under the bus. Uh, so, yeah, for me, it's still a seven, but I think that she's on the upswing um, if she continues the way she is. Mm -hmm. uh, I also went with a seven for Hannah. Um, I I just, I, I have not loved uh, what she's done this week. I do think that her positioning is great, um, but uh, she really has sort of uh, been sort of cycling through targets. Uh, she started with Alyssa. She went to, uh, this week she started with Alyssa. Then, uh, she, you know, if, if did not get her way with Alyssa. She she lost that battle to X. Um, and then uh, and then again lost the battle uh, where it went to Brittany instead of Alyssa. She tried to fight that, also failed that one. Um, then she was trying very hard to, uh, to get Derek evicted next week, which I thought was absurd for her game. Uh, she eventually, um, you know, uh, gets to the point where she realizes maybe I shouldn't do that. Um, instead, we'll have him evicted two weeks from now, which is almost worse, I think, because he is a threat to the cookout and leaving him until two weeks from now allows him to have the coup d'etat power potentially. <laughs> um, and it's like, if you're going to leave him in the game, you might as well try to keep him until the seven so that you can uh, strike at uh, other members of the cookout. Uh, if that's what you're looking for, since leaving him past next week is dangerous to the cookout to begin with. Um, and her, the logic she keeps using keeps changing as well. I, I just haven't loved the way she's been thinking about the game um, until very recently. She did start talking to Tiffany again about maybe leaving in Derek X and, and Claire um, a little bit longer uh, because that would be beneficial to their personal games. If I would love to see more of this from Hannah, um, but I also don't love her end game plans. Um, she does seem to genuinely want to bring Xavier as far as possible, uh, including all the way up until the final three, which I really just think is a big mistake. Uh, she should when here's the thing, this conversation with Tiffany, I thought was, was particularly bad. Tiffany says we should take out all the guys from the, from the cookout one, two, three. Um, and, and Hannah says, nah. What about, we know we want to keep X. Uh, like we want X in the final three. Um, and it, I'm just like, ooh, I don't, 
Don't love that from Hannah. I really do think that uh, Xavier has a much better shot at winning the game uh, than Hannah does at this moment. Uh, a lot of people outside of the cookout respect Xavier. A lot of people inside of the cookout have a lot of respect for Xavier. Um, you're just, you're giving this guy uh, everything he needs. So um, for those reasons, it's still a seven for me. I just need to be a little more impressed with the game that she's playing um, uh, more so than just the position that she's in. Um, so, uh, so that's where it is for me. Although she is probably a top three contender to win the game at this point. Um, so let's talk about Kyland. Um, and we will start with the audience who is down at a five for Kyland from the audience, <laughs> um, down from the six last week, the audience, not a fan of where Kyland is. Melissa, what do you think? Yeah, uh, I mean, people were not thrilled with Kylan's HOH this week. Um, I feel like he did not handle it very well. I think in terms of like, I think the way that he did the first one with the questions, his first HOH with the questions seemed to be like, hey, I just want to make this easy and like fair for everyone. And I just want to kind of ask some questions to get, just get a read on the house. Um, and I didn't feel like it was... Um, as like i don't know like combative i guess as this version um i feel like this version was like uh uh you don't speak i'm the hoh like or like i don't speak you're the you're the, you're answering questions for me it's like and like he's trying is he's like clearly trying to gather information versus before it was like hey i'm trying to just get a casual read on the house um so i do feel like it's a very different situation from last time and and you hear a lot of people in the house saying that i mean they say like yeah, I don't want a, uh, Kylan to win HOH again. Like, I don't want, you know, we got to get Kylan out. And I do feel like people are looking at Kylan as like an expendable member of the cookout. Um, and I also think that people external to Kylan are looking at him to target him. And not only that, this HOH week didn't seem to make any sense. It's like, why, like you're targeting, if you're going to tar put up someone from your like quote unquote alliance, like Claire, then like, you get that person out. You don't then be like, oh, but I'm going to like actually save you with this like extra veto and all this other stuff. It's just it's, like too convoluted. It did not make any sense. Um, and people were getting frustrated and I can see why they were getting frustrated. So this was not a great week for Kylan. Um, but, you know, I, I have to give him, he is still in the cookout. So like he does get a, a little bump in his score and I don't feel necessarily comfortable going so far down for Kylan. Um, but yeah, not not great for him. Um, so I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to go with what the audience said and give him a five. Yeah, you know, I I considered four uh, pretty heavily. <laughs> um, not because, again, his long-term positioning is a four, but because he has just done so much damage to his game this week mm -hmm. um, that, that, like, if we're judging this week, I mean, he needs to be penalized. Uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, like the plan in the first place, the way that he put up Claire, the explanations that he gave, that's the only reason that Claire and Derek are starting to, to look at like, oh, something is wrong because Kyland is completely, uh, you know, all over the place with, with what he's doing. Um, he's made people more suspicious. Uh, he ends up taking out, uh, Brittany on his HOH, but the way that he is handling her is so bad. Um, for as much as, you know, people say that Brittany's emotional and that she's going to be a bitter juror or whatever, I, I've never actually felt that way. I actually do think that Brittany is somebody who is willing to vote for somebody that got her out and, and played a good game. Um, but I also think that Brittany, like most people, doesn't take it too kindly when somebody is a complete jerk to them as they're taking them out of the game. Uh, and I think that Brittany at this point would be completely justified in not wanting to vote for Kylan. Uh, hopefully they're not, you know, hopefully she's not voting for big D over Kylan. Obviously she would, but like, um, but like, hopefully that's not the scenario where Kylan loses. Um, but, uh, but he's done so much damage to his game there outside of the cookout. Uh, Claire doesn't trust him. Derek doesn't trust him. Uh, Brittany doesn't want to vote for him. Um, but also inside the cookout, he took Aza and made her an enemy, uh, uh, unnecessarily. Um, like again, like the way that he handled the HOH competition, we've discussed it to death at this point, but, uh, it wasn't perfect, but it wasn't 
it wasn't impossible to come back from. Um, how he re responded to the uh, response to that scenario was terrible. And he continues to respond terribly to the situation. He refuses to, 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 like, to back down, essentially. Um, and it's just getting worse and worse. Um, and you know, we, uh, we did talk about this morning that like, I don't think this is, this is Kylan necessarily. I don't think this is like who he is. I think that we saw who he was when he came in. I think that he has kind of lost himself in this house a bit. Um, but for his game, that's a terrible thing. Uh, and so I, I want to go with the four, but I do still think he has a decent chance to win this thing. Um, for as much as people want him to be the first gone from the cookout, uh, I do think he can win these end game competitions. Um, and, uh, you know, he does have a couple of people who may not want him gone first, like Big D. Um, and I'm still not sure where, uh, you know, where Tiffany will ultimately fall, uh, as she, I do think has recognized the threat of Xavier as well. So, uh, I think he can win this game against Aza or Big D, um, Probably not Hannah at this point, which, you know, wouldn't uh, wouldn't have been what I would have said a couple of weeks ago. Um, I mean, can you guys remember when in week two we were like, Tiffany, why do you want to do a final two with Kylan? He'll beat you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember? He exactly. was like during his HOH. I, I mean, we were all like, oh, wow, this guy, a star. He's got mm -hmm. it on lock. Like now it's like it's it's funny how it can change so quickly. Yeah. yeah, we're like, he's laying the groundwork for HOHs to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's it's a five. It's a five for me. Uh, I remember when we compared it to, to Frenchies and we were all like, wow, this is how you do an HOH. Good job, <laughs> Kylan. It's like, oh my <laughs> yeah. God. It's yeah. only because it was right after Frenchies. Yeah, maybe that we way. Were now, just... now we're seeing it. Yeah. But no, I, <laughs> I agree with you, Taryn, that I feel like he's kind of lost himself the longer he's been in there because – you know, he took after his HOH, he took that little pause to kind of just be with Sarah Beth for a while and take his hands off of things. And then when she was on the block, then he came back out. And I think he just came back back out to uh, it was too much. And and now this HOH, I think he just handled it terribly. There's hardly been a time where I would prefer not to see what's going on in the HOH. Um, it's just because all of these conversations, they're not they're not going anywhere. There aren't. They aren't productive. Um, and so I, I was a, a between a five and a six for him. But when I started thinking about him moving forward, I just don't see it. I see him being someone they they very well need to get out um, That with the way he handled both of these competitions this week. Uh, so, yeah, I agree with a five. Yeah. Uh, can I also say for what it's worth, I think that uh, of the non-cookout jury members, I think that Sarah Beth, is the one that is going to be the most hurt and the least likely to vote for their person. Um, I think Derek X perfectly willing to vote for Tiffany. Um, actually, I'm not sure that Derek X would vote for Hannah. Um, he doesn't like fully respect her game, but it wouldn't be because he was hurt by her betraying him. It would just be because he likes, uh, he probably would respect Xavier or Tiffany's game more. Um, I think Claire perfectly willing to vote for Tiffany. Alyssa, I think perfectly willing to vote for Xavier would probably understand um, this situation in the same way that Christian kind of did. Uh, Brittany, I think, is going to be perfectly understanding. I mean, she'll probably be hurt, but I think she would vote for, for Big D or Aza. I think Sarah Beth will be like, okay, I understand, but holy crap, Kylan, like, what were all those conversations? Why did you act the way that we did? Like, you really made me feel like I was, you know, like, uh, like I just feel like there are some deep feelings going on that uh, could be really hurt uh, by the way that Kylan has handled it. Not just that he is betraying her, but the way that he handles that relationship um, and uh, in the way that he wants to discard it, uh, it feels a little more personal. Yeah, and even look at the, just even think about the comparison and the way that Sarah Beth reacted to people saying like her and Kylan are a showmance compared to like, uh, Derek X and Hannah people they're like yeah that that's my husband or that's my wife and you know like it's more it's much so it's much more playful because it's not like there are clearly feelings from Hannah Derek X is on the fence so the fact that there's nothing real there currently is the way the reason they can joke about it but with Sarah Beth and Kylan man I mean the way they sit and have conversations with his arm around her like I totally agree she's gonna be a little bit a little bit hurt. Mm-hmm.
Uh, all right. Well, let's move on to uh, to Sarah Beth here um, as uh, we continue forward. And I have completely forgotten the order, but I'm going to just say Melissa <laughs> is going to start with Sarah Beth. Um, yeah, not great for Sarah Beth. Um, I'm concerned about her because I also think that she's trusting the wrong people and her order of who she wants to go out is not good. Um, or at least not beneficial for her. It's beneficial for other people, but oh, Riley wants attention. <laughs> um, it's not beneficial for her. So, um, plus, you know, that she's in danger. I mean, because if, People want to get to Kylan, but they don't want to get out Kylan because he's in the cookout. They're going to take out Sarah Beth. Like that's it's as easy as that. Um, and I also feel like some of the people who are not even in the cookout are interested in getting out Sarah Beth. So I don't think she's in a good spot generally, and I don't think she's doing herself any favors. Um, so I feel like I think because she's kind of hitched her wagon to Kylan, and Kylan is a a sinking ship. Those two things don't really go together, a sinking ship and a hitching your wagon. But anyway, uh, <laughs> they, I think that she's in even more danger than someone like Alyssa is, at least from my perspective. So I, I do feel like I need to give Sarah Beth um, a three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm at a three for Sarah Beth as well. Um, you know, uh, similar sort of to Alyssa where she's doing the bare minimum. She spends a lot of time with Kylan. She's not really thinking outside the box enough here. Um, and she is somebody that very well could go home next week uh, and has a very, very tough road to even get past the final seven at this point. So um, it's not looking good. Asia, what do you think? Yeah, she, if anybody besides Kylan had won HOH this week uh, in the cookout, she very well could have been on the block. Where is she? I don't even know. Like she's just laying down all day and um, just not anywhere where a majority of the house is. So it's just like, it's, it's inevitable. Like Melissa said, if they want to get to Kylan, but they don't want to get Kylan easily get Sarah Beth. It's just like that, that, that just, it just seems like that's always the next plan for people. So I, I also agree with the three. All right. Uh, the audience, well, again, a little bit more generous. They gave, uh, Sarah Beth a four. four this all week. right. Audience. Uh, there you go. Um, all right, let's talk about Tiffany. Let's talk about Tiffany. Um, so Tiffany, uh, for me, she's been, uh, she's been a nine, uh, pretty much the whole way through here. Um, um, nearly from the start, uh, for me, uh, she has been a nine. Um, but, uh, this week has really solidified the plan that she put in place, uh, that it is really locked in and it's going to be the path forward. And uh, I said it the the minute she made this plan, the very next morning, uh, I said, it's interesting. I think it could work, but I don't think it's her optimal path. Um, and I think that's exactly where we have arrived at here um, for Tiffany. Uh, I do not love that she was so ready and willing to get rid of Claire. I do not love that she continues to be ready and willing to get rid of Claire. However, I will say uh, to Tiffany's credit, uh, right before this podcast uh, earlier today. Um, she has now come around to the idea of, you know what, maybe I should keep uh, Claire and uh, Derek X around for as long as I can. Um, but uh, but I don't love that she was so will willing to let them go in the first place. Uh, but again, that said, uh, she did put a lot of work into uh, to protect uh, Claire this week and uh, shift the target over onto Brittany. Um, and... Uh, you know, I think that both her and Hannah worked toward that. I think Tiffany was a little bit more effective in getting what she wanted in that regard. She did some good work um, coming together with Kyland and, uh, you know, squashing that. She did some good work squashing or as starting to squash uh, the, the beef with Aza as well. I do like her game more than I don't like her game this week. Um, and I actually do still think she can win this game. I do think that she is in a position to do that. I've, I've talked about this, but I have seen hints that she does see Xavier as a threat and does not want to bring Xavier to the final three and is tr trying to start to plant those seeds in Hannah's head, um, which would not be the worst thing in the world. I fully believe that Tiffany's ideal final three is herself, Aza, and Hannah, and I do think that's a 
pretty good spot for her. I think she beats either one of them. And uh, I don't think it's impossible that uh, that either one of them wouldn't take her. Uh, that uh, I think Hannah might take her. And I think that Aza might take her over Hannah. Um, neither is a guarantee at this point, And people may disagree with me. But I think it's an option at that point. Um, and, I, and like I said, I think she beats either of them um, pretty handily. Uh, so I don't think she can't win. And I think that she's still one of the more likely winners. In fact, I think that she is, at this point in time, the second most likely winner still. The problem is that she should be the far and away, can't nobody can touch her, 10 out of 10, uh, everybody else is seven or below, uh, front runner, um, but, uh, but she is not. I still honestly fully believe that she is the best player in this house. Um, but, uh, but her position and the game that she is choosing to play is, uh, is not necessarily ref reflective of that. So for those reasons, I am down to an eight for Tiffany. Um, Asia, what do you think? Yeah, and I, I totally agree with all of that. And, and thinking on that, um, where her best positioning is, at, like with final threes, Aza and Hannah, I think, it, I think we're about two weeks away from them creating a final three, calling it Destiny's Child, with <laughs> Tiffany being Beyonce, <laughs> Hannah being <laughs> Hannah being Kelly, and Aza, of course, being Michelle. Um, and so I, I think they are going to realize that, especially when they start thinking, well, it's obviously going to have to be Tiffany and, and Hannah to realize it and convince Aza that they need to ride it out. Um, and so because of that, I think th we've seen it this whole game. Tiffany has had options. No matter what has, is happening, she has had options. And, and that just, just just shows how amazing of a game she's playing. I know last time I was on here, I gave her a 10. <laughs> um, she's definitely not a 10, but she still is playing an amazing game. Um, even playing, even, you know, taking the hardest path that she can take. Um, so I, I agree with you, Taryn, and I'll give her an eight. All right, uh, Melissa. Yeah, I agree with both of you guys. Um, I I think that you guys are right, that she is the best player in the game. And I think that what also makes me still believe that is that even though I think that she's putting herself in a bad position, I think she's doing it on purpose. Like, I mean, she obviously is doing it on purpose. Like, it's not one of those situations where it's like, oh, she's really smart, but she just like doesn't understand that that's a worse position than this one. It's like she recognizes that she could like easily win this other way, but she's choosing to do it, you know, to keep the cookout intact uh, for, you know, obviously larger reasons. And so I don't, I don't think that necessarily that takes away from my view of her as, as a player. I think she's still super amazing and, and super smart. Um, but I do think in terms of like winning, I don't know if that is great for her because I think it it really prevents her from being like the far and away winner, like we all said. So, um, yeah, I, I do think that she does go down in my ranking, but I do also think that she was impressive this week in terms of uh, saving Claire, but at the same time, she was not impressive by not caring, not doing anything, literally, literally anything to keep Claire off the block. Um, you know, I was very disappointed at the beginning of the week, I will say, because it was like, I understand that she can't be like, Claire, watch out. I, you know, Kylan's telling me that he's going to put you on the block because then she'd be like, well, why is Kylan telling you that? And like, what's the deal? And like, obviously that might like, like reveal the cookout, but like she could have at least when Claire says like, well, who else is there to put up? There's nobody else left been like. Hey, you know, you never know. He he could put up any of any of us, like all of us who were, you know, we don't know. And at least put like a little seed of doubt in Claire's mind that like maybe it would be Claire going up on the block. But instead, she's just like, yeah, you're right. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, there won't be anyone else. It'll just be these people. It's like I was hoping that she would maybe like give some sort of reason for Claire to 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 at least be a little suspicious. But you know, oh well, whatever. Um, we'll see what happens moving forward, but I, I, I do think that there is like a glimmer of hope in terms of Tiffany winning or Tiffany's win equity increasing, because if she does decide to keep Derek X and Claire around, um, the four of them with Hannah could really do some damage and, and, you know, take out some big threats moving forward. So we'll just have to see, you know, what happens. 
And just to clarify with my Destiny's Child reference, Aza is only the Michelle because it, in in the context of Big Brother, of course, Aza can sing and she's beautiful. So that, that's, <laughs> that's just in response to the chat. And then secondly, with, you know, me rating Tiffany and Hannah equally, it's Hannah improving and it is Tiffany, well, you know, coming down a little bit from where mm -hmm. she's been with the nine. So it's not that, you know, they're, they're those ratings for, you know, different reasons. All right. Um, well, the audience gave Tiffany an eight again this week, uh, not down from the eight, uh, last week, um, from Tiffany, although, uh, what was it last week? Um, it is, it's, it's, it's a lower score eight, but it's still an eight, uh, from the audience. Uh, okay. So finally, let's talk about Xavier, Asia. What are your thoughts on Xavier? Oh man, Xavier is in a really good position where, like we said earlier, people outside of the cookout like him, people in the cookout like him. He's already a part of final three plans for Hannah and Tiffany at the moment. Um, he's respected. His game is respected. People come to him. They're not afraid to like that sit down between Oz and Tiffany. They weren't afraid to completely spill out how they were truly feeling about everything, including the game in terms of each other, um, which I thought just thought was odd. <laughs> that it should just, But I mean, they needed him to mediate. Um, and so I think that he is in a really good position. I think he's going to take one scenario where maybe Derek X realizes that he's a huge threat um, in terms of he could win when he wants to win. Like, look at the wall. He made it all the way to final two and threw it. Um, and so it, it, even this HOH this week, he threw it. So I was in between an eight and a nine. And I will have to say, considering, you know, Hannah and Tiffany scores this week too, uh, I did not think I, and I'm kind of wavering from where I was originally, but now looking at it, I, I, I do think he's a nine. All right, Melissa. Uh, yeah, I, sorry, can someone else go first? <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, for me looking at Xavier here, I, uh, I do think if Tiffany is in the second best position to win this game, that of course means that Xavier is in the best position to win this game right now, primarily because of his competition ability, uh, or at least, uh, my perceived or, or yeah, the amount of my perception of him being a good <laughs> person at competitions um, because I think that he is going to win his way to the end um, once he gets there. Uh, he just needs to survive a couple of weeks, which he is currently poised to do because Kylan has really shot himself in the foot. Um, and um, and I, I feel like uh, like the, he is uh, he is our, our you know potential winner here. Um, I've I've been thinking about like where to classify his gameplay so far, um, and to me, uh, you know, I'm looking at his game, and I was initially thinking he's kind of like the Brett uh, in level six, but then I thought no, he's more like the the Casey, um, mm -hmm. but he's like the most optimal version of Casey, where Casey was, um, you know, passive uh, to lie low, but uh, kind of really had to be led around by Tyler. Um, uh, in a lot of uh, different areas. Um, uh, Xavier is passive intentionally as well, but but really also plays his own game. And he didn't build uh, anything, right? He didn't build the uh, the cookout. He didn't build the structure of how they're playing this. Um, his allies ended up leaving. Um, similar to Casey, he had a couple of really good ones that ended up leaving um, you know, uh, early um, because he couldn't protect them. Um, and he let the, so he let them sort of go. Um, and similar to Casey, I think that he threw a bunch of competitions and will end up winning a bunch of competitions moving forward. Um, and he also is somebody that is just very well entrenched within his group. Uh, and without that group, I, I'm, I'm curious to see what he would do. Um, but within this group, he is very, very powerful. Um, and, uh, and he is occupying a very good space right now. It's not something that other people can't see. Uh, Claire and Derek want to target him. They could target him if he wasn't protected. Um, they still might, might try, um, but they probably can't get him. Um, and that's what makes his position so strong right now. Um, and I think that his biggest, uh, threat at the moment, it really is Tiffany. And I think that Tiffany is somebody that, uh, again, can potentially see what he's doing here. Um, and, 
uh, and try to take him out a little bit earlier than he may anticipate. Uh, also, if he doesn't win those endgame comps like I'm anticipating, he's not in as strong as a position as you might think. His current final three situation is, um, or at least final four situation, is Big D, himself, Hannah, and Tiffany. Uh, moving down to a final three, essentially, assuming Big D doesn't win anything, of himself, Hannah, and Tiffany. I do fully believe that Hannah and Tiffany take each other which means he does have to win that final three HOH or rely on Big D if Big D somehow gets there um, to potentially win and take him. But that's, you know, probably not happening. Uh, so I am looking still at a win out scenario for uh, for Xavier. Um, but because I think he's very good at these things, I do think he can uh, win out. And I do think he has a very, very good chance of winning this game. And for those reasons, I went with an eight for Xavier. Melissa, what do you think? Yeah, I'm um, teetering between an eight and a nine, if I'm being honest, just because um, I think that he's in a very good position. And I think that uh, I don't, I, like you said, I don't know if anyone who really can do much of anything is targeting him. I feel like he's not one of the people in the cook that the cookout themselves are like, yeah, he's expendable. We can get him out at six or anything like that. Um, people seem to want to take him um down to the end uh which i you know would be worried about because it seems like he would be possibly uh, a lot to win i think a lot of people would vote for him and i think um you know this week he played pretty impressively in keeping Alyssa uh not as not the target um so you know i am impressed with him in that way um but I, I don't know if I if I see I, I think that like like you said, I don't know if I see him getting to that point in the end where he can win. Um so I, I'm a little I'm not fully at a nine yet, I think. Um I I, I feel like it's like I, I he's on notice, but in a good way. <laughs> where it's like, where it's like I'm like almost ready to make that jump. And you know, like I take a long time to like get rank people so high just because like I try and you know keep it more reined in I guess and same with me giving out ones I try not to do that very much um except for when I truly feel like they they've got it and that's what I felt last week with Tiffany and I and I do feel like I'll be there soon possibly with Xavier but I think at this point I'm at an eight yeah and and I think you know I've explained this before but um, for me, you know, it, it's it's that um, he didn't he didn't create this position. He he um, he behaved in a way that allowed it to happen to him, which I think is again great. Um, but what it means is that I don't think he's as capable as somebody who created the position uh, at holding the position and uh, and at readjusting if something goes wrong. And we are still only at the final eleven. Jury just started, so I'm not quite ready to write the check for the guy. When he didn't even, uh, mm. you know, create the position to begin with, um, but uh, but I do think that he is our most likely winner at this point. And as time goes on, if he continues to maintain this position, as I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, uh, his rating will continue to go up. In my estimation, here uh, the audience, the audience gave Xavier an eight as well, mm. and uh, this is actually very interesting because uh, he is neck and neck with Tiffany here. Um, they uh, are separated by one hundredth of a point. Um, Tiffany with a 7.84 and Xavier with a 7.83. So Tiffany oh oh, wow. maintains the record. She has not had the, she has always had the highest rating from the audience but hmm. only by a hundredth of a point this week. <laughs> we'll see so if that shifts moving forward. That is funny. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing that could improve Tiffany's ranking at this point or, or um, her rating is the her ability to actually kind of win a comp. I mean, her performance mm -hmm. this week was, it was laughable, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the fact that, it would have been nice if Kylan had just hit the wrong answer because clearly she didn't know it. Um, I mean, I, I think y'all talked about that. There was a higher chance of him hitting the right wrong answer. Um, mm -hmm. But then, oh my gosh, with the 
with the high rollers room. How was that even possible to knock off two of the things? Um, but yeah, I, speaking of Xavier, he is uh, working that social game right now because he has on Oz's wig which, <laughs> <laughs> and him playing a character named Lucius. So I think that's pretty funny. Can't wait to rewatch that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and that's that's the thing too. I, I always feel like I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like, uh, like sort of talking about why uh why I, I like i i guess why i think tiffany is is doing really well and why xavier is also doing really well but not quite as well um and uh and i feel like i don't get to talk as much about how much i love xavier he is so funny um and uh and i really do think his his social game is is really really good and like part of what makes him like uh you know, sort of like because what, what what excites me about his game is that I really do see it as the optimal Casey game where like I was disappointed in Casey's game in a few different areas, but the theory of it uh, was interesting, right? That uh, that a lot of people are like, well, somebody like Casey could be very successful in this game, <laughs> but if only she were a little more intentional with it and a little more self-interested and with more killer instinct. And I feel like that is Xavier. Um, and uh, And getting to see him try this kind of game uh, is is very interesting to me, and uh, I'm very curious to see how it plays out. Now, of course, we are in a kind of unique scenario here um, with the cookout, but uh, it's still very interesting to me, and I and I think that he's he's very very good and somebody that I would always look for as a player to to make a deep run um, and just generally have a really good chance um, at uh, at doing well. Um, he's just not the kind of player that builds structures and runs the game like a lot of the other uh, you know greats that we are used to seeing. Um, it's a different kind of gameplay. It's also very good. Uh, I think that um, it's not quite as good as uh, you know being able to control everything, but it's still very, very good, and I think it can be very, very successful. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see uh, how it plays out for him. So yeah. that's what we have for the stock watch. Um, let's quickly move over to uh, some of these questions and uh we're going to do a quiz the quiz is uh how were these players rated uh ranked by the audience uh i asked the audience to rank the players from their favorite to their least favorite and i'm going to ask uh you guys to run through uh what you think uh, we're at 11 players now uh do we think we're ready to just run through all of them instead of just top four bottom four uh, sure yeah all right so who is the number one player on the board. Who is the favorite player from the audience? Derek X. Derek X, yeah. You are both correct. Who's number two? <sighs> Ugh. Hannah. Tiffany. Asia is correct. Oh, it's yeah. Tiffany. Asia up by one. All right, I say uh, Hannah. <laughs> yeah, it has three. to be Hannah. You are both incorrect. What? It is Claire. Claire, oh, wow. wow. Now I say Hannah. Yeah, I'm has just to be keep Hannah. it down until I until I get it at some point. You are both correct. Hannah All is right. number okay, four. Okay. okay. After Hannah, who is number five? Oh, mm -hmm. Xavier. Yeah, I. Mm, yeah, I think Xavier. You are both correct. Nice. Who's number Ooh. six? Oh gosh, Brittany. Who, wait, 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 who's left? We have Brittany, Big D, Aza, Kylan, Sarah Beth. Kylan, Sarah Beth, and Alyssa. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess Brittany. You are both incorrect. Oh, Aza? It is not Aza either. <laughs> I, don't know. I literally don't understand the people this time. Around. It can't be Kylan. It's actually Maybe. there's a big there's a big drop off here, and number six is Alyssa. Oh mm. wow! Alyssa. Okay. Okay. So who's number huh. seven? Then I think number seven is Brittany. Brittany. You're both incorrect. What? Sarah Beth. <laughs> incorrect again. Number seven <laughs> is Kylan. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. who is number Brittany. eight? Brittany. She's going to be in Thailand. Asia is correct. It is <laughs> Thailand. Asia is up by two. Oh my God. Who is number nine? We're now in the bottom three. So it's Big D, Brittany, and Sarah Beth. Correct. 
has it to be Sarah Brittany. Beth. Asia is correct. Again, <laughs> it is Sarah Beth in ninth place. <laughs> oh, oh God. my God. Brittany. Big D. <laughs> Melissa takes one okay. back. There you go. Oh Asia my God. Up by two. Uh, and then I finally, literally don't understand everybody. <laughs> Big D at the bottom of the list. I don't know what the heck is going on here. I guess I just like, I, my, I'll say this. My Twitter feed is very curated apparently because uh, it is not representative of what <laughs> the people here are uh, voting for. So I'll just say that. Like, I've literally- Blaming only seen, it on like, your Twitter feed I'm now. just going to say, all I've seen this whole week is like Kylan hate. And I've seen Aza like love. And I've seen, uh, I have seen Claire like not love this week, even though originally at the start of the week, everyone's like, vote for her. And then it was like, what are you mm -hmm. doing, Claire? Like, you know, what the, what the heck's the problem here? And Brittany, I've seen Brittany love from people. So everything's mixed up and I don't know what's going on anymore. Well, I, I did follow Oz's account, which I guess her sister's running. And I was like, why am I seeing so much Oz love all of a sudden on my <laughs> timeline? I realized her like, retweets oh. were flooding my, I had to mm -hmm. mute her retweets. <laughs> All right. Well, I asked the audience to rate the episodes this week. They gave them a 7 out of 10, same as last week. Um, I asked them to rate the feeds this week, a 6.7 out of 10, down from the 8.1 last week. Mm -hmm. Big drop off this week on the feeds. Uh, I asked them to rank the season as a whole so far, a 7.7, .7, down from the 8.2. I believe this is the first time the season has dipped below an 8 overall. Uh, people... I guess, a little bored with the direction, uh, mm -hmm. which, again, I can understand. I don't necessarily agree myself, but um, there is definitely a downturn in these ratings this week. We'll see if they hold. Um, ask them to rate the competitions this week, uh, a 6.8 versus the 7.2 last week. And I asked, uh, what do you think of the high roller twist, the whole thing? Uh, and uh, the audience gave it a 5.5, um, which is actually up from the uh, what became a 4.9 last week uh, in terms of expected twist. So uh, I guess slightly better than expected. Um, and then uh, specifically the second veto twist, they gave a 5.8. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're inching into this meh category of ratings uh, yeah. for these yeah. things. Um, all right, so I asked the audience, uh, assuming that we get to vote again next week to give BB Bucks, uh, who will receive the majority of your votes for BB Bucks? Um, I uh, I won't quiz you guys on this one, but- uh, My guess would be Derek X. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my guess would be Derek X, and then Claire. About 50% of the vote goes to Derek X. Uh, Claire in second place with 22%. Um, Tiffany in third with about 11%. Uh, and Hannah. then Hannah down in fourth with six and a half percent. Everybody else at two and a half percent or lower. Uh, <laughs> Guess what? It'll be, you know, Derek F and, you know, Aza or Sarah Beth who ends up getting all the votes. So yeah. this ranking doesn't even matter. Yeah. None of our votes matter. <laughs> you, you heard it here first. Uh, your vote does not matter. <laughs> Um, who is the best person for Kylan to have targeted for his game this week? Uh, what do you guys think? Well, who should Kylan have targeted this week? I think, well, I mean, it's not what we would want, but I think for Kylan's game specifically, it would have been smart to go after Derek X. Um, but he didn't do that. Yeah. Derek X or Tiffany, if you were like looking at it from a non cookout perspective, I guess, like, yeah, Tiffany is, a, is not a fan of Kylan at this point. And they made that very clear last week uh, that they were not on the same page. And then it was like, oh, Kylan wins HOH. Like, oh, it was all just a misunderstanding. Like, we were back on the same page now or whatever. But, like, the fact that last week was so rocky, I think that it would have been in his best interest to get Tiffany out. Um, but, you know, obviously that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, uh, the audience says Derek X was the right call, 30%, um, with 27% right behind saying Claire was the best call. Um, I actually do feel like Claire was the best for Kylan's personal game, although it is kind of weird to talk about because 
there's what's best for Kylan's game if he wasn't going to be loyal to the cookout, which right. is probably his ideal path. Then there's mm -hmm. what's best for his game if he is loyal to the cookout, but self-interested within the cookout, which is mm -hmm. like a second path. And then there's what's his best move if he's loyal to the cookout and is dedicated to getting the cookout to final six. And so right. for that last one, I think Derek X. For the second one, I think it's Claire. For the first one, um, who, who even knows? I mean, it's so, <laughs> so veered off from what he's doing um, that, uh, that that who knows at this point. But um, but probably, I don't know, like uh, just, just take out Big D or something. <laughs> not Big D, not Big D, Aza. Take out Aza at this point. She's so pissed mm -hmm. at you. Yeah, um, right. So uh, I asked the audience, do you think the cookout will make the final six? So we talked about this, about 60% said yes. Uh, who do you want to be evicted this week? Um, perhaps not too surprisingly, about 65% say Big D. They would prefer yeah. to see Big D out this week. Um, and then who do you want to see a win HOH next week? Um, uh, nearly 40% of the vote says Claire hmm. with about 30% saying Derek X. Uh, and then, um, about 10% saying Hannah. Um, so, uh, Claire, Derek X or Hannah, I think this is primarily revolving around let's keep Derek X safe next week. <laughs> yeah. If at all possible. Uh, yeah, yeah so. I'm in the Hannah camp. I, I've been rooting for her to win HOH for the past few weeks. Um, mainly, I don't, even though she's been all talk about getting Derek X out, I don't think she would do it herself. And right. so I would like to see her have some power. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, let's pull up the, uh, the leaderboard here, if I can. Uh, here is the Stockwatch leaderboard. Uh, looks like, um, has it been updated? Let me see. Uh, no, it has not. Here's the updated leaderboard. Um, Justin Powell taking over first place. Uh, Justin Powell was a second place finisher in Big Brother 21. Uh, oh. so there you go. Uh, Mel from the update today looking, uh, looking oh, wow. really good. Here wow. Place. What the heck? Um, Impressive. Uh, Justin went in on Xavier, as did Mel. Um, I may be on this page now. Yeah, there I am. There you 40, are. 49th for me. Uh, creeping back up after that missed week. Um, <laughs> uh, here we go. I went in on Xavier this week. Um, I guess I should have given him a nine, huh? Uh, then um, we got uh, Stargates here. First place finisher for BB22 is in the top 100. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's see. Asia. I went all in on Hannah. All in on Hannah. Uh, yeah. That is going to um, make you some money, uh, but not enough, apparently. Oh, you right. actually moved down 30 ranks. Um, I guess uh, a lot of people were in on Xavier here right. this week. Um, yeah, I literally I don't remember what I did. Better by Melissa um, here. Um, oh, look at this. Uh, no longer the worst Melissa. Nice. <laughs> you are now Melissa's above Denny's Melissa's Denny's. <laughs> Melissa Elliott and Melissa Pinkerton uh, to be the fourth worst <laughs> Melissa. Woohoo! Thank um, you, other yeah. Melissas, for being worse than me. You uh, you were in on uh, Derek X and Hannah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think you lost some from Derek X, but gained some from Hannah, uh, which is oh, overall I went up. net positive gain. And you went up 284 places wow, you're on your way pretty <laughs> darn good guys it's slow but sure have you ever heard of the tortoise and the hare <laughs> <laughs> i i feel like i recall that story yeah yeah um, yeah. yeah well think about that i'm coming for you taryn <laughs> all right uh so that is the leaderboard on the stock watch of course if you want to uh, talk uh, more about the stock watch, uh, you can come to my stream, twitch.tv slash Taryn Armstrong. Uh, I stream on Thursdays, uh, right around the time the feeds go down uh, prior to the episode uh, to give out advice for the, uh, the stock watch um, and give some predictions on where I think things might go, whether things are a safe buy, a risky buy, or a bad buy. Um, and uh, this week is going to be particularly interesting considering the roulette twist means that somebody is randomly going to end up on the block. And as we all know, being on the block, not great for the ratings overall. Uh, but maybe that won't be the case considering how safe somebody should be on the block if they're a member of the cookout. But uh, we will have to wait and see on all of that. So um, that's what we've got. Uh, any final thoughts, Melissa, on the week? 
Uh, no, I, uh, I honestly, I thought Claire was going to be going home this week and, uh, turns out she's not. So, uh, you know, that's good. I really like Claire, but you know, I, uh, I do feel bad because I feel like last week was Brittany's like sort of redemption week where she was starting to, you know, like come into her own and be like, I can, I can do this. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh, nope. Now you're going. So not, not ideal, but you know, um, I'm excited to see how everything, you know, kind of plays out. It does seem to me like we've got a big battle um, coming up with Tiffany and Xavier. I don't know if they know that yet, but like <laughs> that, I do feel like that is going to happen at some point. Um, so I'm excited to see it. And uh, yeah, we'll just see what happens with these twists. All right. Asia, any final thoughts? Yeah, I, you know, I'm really enjoying the season. I, um, I'm rooting for the cookout and Derek X and Claire. That's eight people. So I know, right? <laughs> let's see how that goes. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. Um, and I will say, you know, just like in the past, all these seasons, I've wanted like a woman's alliance to work, you know, finally get on the same page, make it to the end. I never in a million years thought I would be able to root for an alliance that was all black. Um, this this BB23, like the cookout is just for the culture because it's never going to happen again, like I said at the very beginning of the podcast. So the fact that this opportunity has presented itself, it's happening in the season. I'm glad that they're trying their hardest to make it work, even though it's not in the best interest of a lot of them at least they're putting in the effort um, to to make it, to make continue to make history because they already have um, with the way that the evictions have gone so far this season. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I think Asia's right though. I mean, I'm, I am worried for future players um, because I do feel like I, on a next, on a future season, if you have black people in the house, you, people are going to be like, Oh, they're working together. They must mm -hmm. be working together. And like, you you will be put in a situation where you're like you have to prove that you're not working with other black people like i feel like that's just so bad and right. i i'm not looking forward to that i really don't know how future house guests are going to deal with that um but you know we'll just have to see but it it is it is true that this does seem like a once in a lifetime sort of opportunity for them so i understand why they would want to stick with the cookout yeah, and I mean, we've seen, I mean, we've seen it in the past. Like they automatically assume last season, Davon, Bailey and David mm -hmm. working together. <laughs> they were not. And so it's like, <laughs> they tried they, to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they tried. Yeah. David, David wasn't having it. Um, so <laughs> then it was like, so we've seen this countless, countless times again, where they automatically assume, well, now it's just going to be like, okay, we don't want to cook out. They can put a name on it to say, we don't right. want a cook out situation to, to happen. Anything else. They just say, we don't want to cook out. And it's like, did you see the cook out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think my take on this, I, I, I agree, I, Asia. That I, I think that, uh, that I mean, the fact of the matter is that uh, that people have assumed that the black uh, players are working together in the past anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. uh, I, I think my perspective on it is that um, anybody that would like, because because we do hear all the time, like, oh, what about the women working together? We hear it on this season all the time, but it very rarely actually impacts the targets. Uh, it very mm -hmm. rarely actually goes anywhere. Um, I, I, like I, nobody actually then systematically eliminates all of the women from the house. Uh, and so mm -hmm. we may hear this spoken aloud. We may hear like, ah, what about a potential cookout? Um, but I don't think that we will see them then be like, well, we have to get all the black people out. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like, I feel like that, that would happens, not be it's, good. It's more right. down to who they cast, I think, than, mm -hmm. than the fact that the cookout existed. Um, yeah. so. Uh, yeah, I, I'm. I don't think I'm too concerned about this really harming, uh, you know, that sort of uh, situation in the future, um, mm -hmm. personally. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, we just gotta wait and see, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a similar situation where people are like, "Oh, it's a bro alliance. Like the bros are gonna work together." Like I, I think that like people automatically look at like the the broy guys and are like, "Oh, those guys must be working together." And and. I do think you're you're right in your assessment that like, well, that doesn't mean that automatically all the bros get taken out. Mm -hmm. Like they usually don't. Like this is the first year that like uh, people were able to get out that like quote unquote bro -y kind of people first. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I'm 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 interested to see how it plays out. Um, I'm hopeful that it really doesn't make that much of an impact. Um, maybe it's something people will look out for more. And maybe, well, yeah. maybe that is a good thing, though, in that, like, 
there's not going to be, and the same with the bro alliance. Like people are looking for bros. People are looking for like an all women's alliance, even though that never really mm-hmm. has been a thing. People are looking for, so maybe you'll make people more aware of like, hey, this might be a secret alliance in, in mm-hmm. some way, form or fashion. Maybe people, it'll just open people's eyes more to like, you know, being more observant and looking around. I don't, yeah. I really don't know, but in terms we'll of, have to see. In terms of success for future potential cookouts, I think it's yeah. going to make it much harder. Uh, oh, yeah. which is why right, I think right. Asia's right. Like this is probably the one time um, in the future, it's going to be much, much harder to hide. <laughs> um, but what I don't think, or at least what I hope wouldn't happen is that if it doesn't exist, that people would find something there anyway. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That basically, you know, uh, similar to, you know, uh, you know, the, the bro situation, like we saw a little bit in Big Brother Canada 9, where it was like, hey, are you bros working together? We don't, we don't, we don't like that. Uh, you're not doing that. And then they weren't, and they were like, okay, okay, you're good. You're good. (laughs) Um, And so like, as long as it's not actually happening, then I think we're probably, we'll probably see a normal game. If, if, if there is another Alliance that tries to do the same thing, they're going to have a much harder time of doing it. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Which will probably be their explanation as to no, why would we be that stupid? Why would we do that again? Everyone would be always coming. It just happened. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Totally. Uh, all right. So that's what we have for you this week. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, it's uh, it's always a fun time on the roundtable. And uh, Asia, thank you so much for uh, for joining us here as well. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Uh, where can people find you, Asia? You can find me at, on Twitter, Asia Like Asia, A-Y-S-H-A Like A-S-I-A. Um, I did a bunch of different podcasts last week, um, one including Outer Banks. You can find that on Post Show Recaps. I was on the finale for the Bachelorette re- uh, Recap. Um, I joined Chappelle, Rob, and Jason Reed on the Reality Rewind, or RHAP re- Rewind to talk about MTV Cribs since we talked about old episodes months ago and then now we talked about the premiere of season 18 to uh, big sean and tj lavin so i think uh, melissa fun- needs to do an mtv cribs yeah, yeah right I, yeah you should this is my real house <laughs> right? take over crazy. only to show your house <laughs> yeah yeah seriously no right. they uh they like i pr- i have proof if you guys rewind this podcast piper was on the couch and then she <laughs> fell off of it and then immediately ran Melissa, over the mic and just like you told us before it, this so. podcast started that you had preloaded video to your background i don't know why you're were we not yeah. supposed to say that Oh, because I'm worried. Oh, Why are you telling everybody that? Right. I didn't know you were lying about it. It was a secret. Wow, our alliance is over. Right. Oh, man. Uh, one more thing. Um, I am covering Married at First Sight weekly, so definitely check that out on uh, the reality TV wrap-ups. All right. Uh, well, you can, of course, again, find me on Twi- uh, Twitch, twitch.tv slash Taryn Armstrong, uh, going live on there. Talk about Big Brother, play some games, have some fun. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Armstrong Taren. That's where I tweet out the survey for this podcast. If you want your voice heard, if you're like, if you're like Melissa, and you're like, what? Those favorites don't make any sense. Uh, then get on there and vote uh, and uh, and make your voice heard. <laughs> um, so uh, you can find that again uh, at Armstrong Taren on Twitter, um, and you can of course find Melissa on Twitter uh, at it's Melissa uh, with three A's. <laughs> yes. Also three. on Instagram. Also on Instagram, Melissa with three A's. Yeah. Oh, it's it's Melissa everywhere. There you go. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, find Melissa on Twitter and Instagram. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.